Greetings, welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything, including this right here. The toxic fandom is killing Star Wars. Ooh. Yeah, these media, they really don't have a clue as far as what's really going on. They're just jumping to conclusions. Anyway, there's they're talking about the racist harassment of Last Jedi star Kelly Marie Tran or Rose Tico. And then there's the solo backlash. Lucasfilm's problems isn't the movies, it's the trolls who want only the nostalgia of their youth, like old Luke Skywalker hiding on an island from everything new. No, you guys aren't getting it. But I'm going to explain it. Uh, anyway, fandom has always seen an us versus them proposition. In the early days, it was because you loved something that the world at large found silly, be it comic books or Doctor Who. Why they have to bring Doctor Who into this? Is that the silly part? Come on, man, leave Doctor Who, man. Doctor Who's the bomb. <laughs> I love Doctor Who. Doctor Who's been around. And I don't mean just the new Doctor Who. I'm talking like all the way back to William Hartnell. Come on, man. William Hartnell had some moments. He had some great moments. Especially when he sits there and giggles. He's like... <laughs> if, you, if you Whovians out there have not... You know, if, if you're not... If you haven't been watching the classic series, you are totally missing out. Totally mi Forget about the whole special effects thing. That's its charm. The fact that it's cheesy looking. That was its charm. But go back and watch the first Doctor. I'm telling you, man. He's, he's got his moments. Yeah, he's cranky. But that's part of his charm also, too. I mean, they all got their little quirks and stuff. But you're totally missing out if you don't check out the first Doctor. I mean, come on. William Hartnell. He... He is Doctor Who. He's the one who started the whole thing. And then the second Doctor, Patrick Troughton, if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't have been a successful uh, lineage as far as from one Doctor to the next. He helped make it successful as far as the regeneration is, uh, is, is concerned. So they both... Uh, God, check them out. I'm telling you. Anyway... It was you and those who felt like you, suddenly against everyone else. Star Wars redefined fandom because it built a bigger tent than ever existed before. Set, uh, blah, blah, blah. We'll just kind of skip over some of this stuff because it's getting kind of dumb. Anyway, Star Wars is an interesting place. The most recent film, Solo, Star Wars Story, has been drastically underperforming at the box office. Um, it's only pulled in $270 million worldwide. Uh, analysts believe that Disney will lose fifty dollars million dollars or more on the film. It's there's no or about it. It's going to lose more because of there's all the all. It's not just the shooting of the film, but there's the marketing and all that other stuff that goes behind it. So it's going to be more. Um, Solo comes on the heels of Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Uh, which proved itself an incredibly divisive film. Well, critics loved it. Don't always trust critics. <laughs> fans were split. Well, let me explain to you why fans were split on it. It doesn't have to do with seeing Luke Skywalker on an island. Um, what it has to do is with just the poor writing in general things that were in that movie that really shouldn't have been there the way characters are treated that could have been treated a lot better and i'm not talking about just luke skywalker there's finn for one i thought he was a fascinating character in uh episode seven and i was looking forward to seeing more of him and he was character was completely totally wasted in eight 
I mean, I know there's some people out there who says, no, no, he was great in an episode. He was great in The Last Jedi. Why? I'm curious. If you do believe that he was awesome in Last Jedi, I'm curious. I want to know. I want to know what it is that you think and feel that that he was so great in Episode Eight. Because I personally, I think he was. It could have been so much better. I'm not saying the actor did a bad job. Okay, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that there's so much lost potential with his character. It's like his character is just degraded um, to I don't know, a laughing stock or just second best. I don't know. I just I really didn't like it. The whole casino thing was just a waste of time. Um, I mean, you could have taken that out of the movie and it wouldn't have mattered. Rose Tico, I'm not hating on, on the actress at all. Um... I'm sure she's a great person. I haven't watched her other movies. Um, I don't really go out and see a whole lot of movies. I play games mainly. A lot, uh, most of the interesting stories I think are in games, not movies. Movies are just same old, same old. It seems nowadays. Um, I don't think Rose Tico is an interesting character at all. I think it's an absolutely boring character. Um, They could have done much more with her character. If they, I don't have a problem with that, they brought in a new character. Um, but it they could have done so much more with it. What I don't, I don't know. Finn could have had a lightsaber. That would have been nice. <laughs> I, I thought it was awesome in seven. Anyway. Um. There's the whole thing with uh, Leia flying through space. I get it. She was using the Force. Um, maybe they could have done it a better way. It just didn't. It just looked absolutely weird. Um, but not only that, when they sit there and, and open up the airlock to bring her in, um, why is it that they didn't get sucked out into space? Or like what? data said in the next generation that's blown out <laughs> correction that's blown out um man luke i i don't like how luke was portrayed luke was portrayed as as being i mean i sort of understand what was going on with it um I mean, the fact that he lost his nephew to the dark side, I suppose I can see how that would have been really distressing to him. Whereas his father was already on the dark side and he was trying to redeem him. With this, he felt like a failure with his, um, his nephew. And then his nephew kind of destroyed whatever order there, you know, that Luke was building. So... I, I get that. I understand that part. Um, I think they could have presented Luke a little differently. Still maybe keep on track with the fact that he's, like, distanced himself. Um, if that's true, then why create a map to go find him? Maybe they should have found a different way to explain that. Um... The whole drinking milk scene, I just thought was absolutely disgusting. It, it, I mean, it was just not... I, I Man, I, I'm a, out of loss for words, what, I'm, what I want to say. I, it was inappropriate. It just, it, it was just inappropriate. It really was. I mean... Whenever you have a scene in a movie, there should be a reason for it to be there. And if you can take a scene out, then that means that it's not necessary. If it, you can take something out and it doesn't affect the story, it doesn't need to be there. 
So like the whole casino was a Canto Bite, Blight, whatever it is. Um, that does it wouldn't change the story if you took that out. Um, Luke drinking milk from a disgusting beast could have taken it out when it mattered. Um, it's like Chewbacca barely had any part of this uh, movie. You could have taken him out, uh, other than being a co-pilot or was he pilot? I don't know. I lose track. But and the thing at the end, as far as Luke, spoiler alert, as far as uh, Luke fading away. I thought was just uh, a cop out. They, I would have been okay if that had happened in, in episode nine, because it kind of, uh, I just, I, I don't know. At least you would still have uh, Luke to look forward to in the next movie and now there's really no one to look forward to the next movie I mean who are we looking forward to Ray what I mean she's like perfect already what is there to look forward to it's I mean how exciting can that be Kylo Ren that might be the only thing to look forward to but you know I don't see anything exciting happening with Kylo Ren what either he's going to be redeemed or he's uh, going to be ushering in a whole new dark era, a Sith. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. It's just uh, there's so many different ways that they could have gone with Episode Eight that would have made it really interesting to make you to make you say, "Oh man, that was a big twist." How is this all going to play out in episode 9? Well now, you know, with the way episode 8 ended, what is there to look forward to? I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. <laughs> um, so, some love the bold liberties of writer-director Ryan Johnson. That's true. Um, I will say that there were some good... Th I'm not saying everything in Episode 8 was bad. There was It had its good moments. Um, so when they were good, they were good. Uh, when it was bad, it was absolutely horrible. Uh, anyway, they understood that there was room under that big tent for characters like Va Vice Admiral Holdo. I absolutely did not like her. Um for all the reasons why other people have said um, because uh, a lot of the problems stemmed because she wouldn't explain the plan to anyone now if she felt that there was a spy in the mist that would have made sense but she didn't it was kind of like you're just going to do what I say I don't have to explain it um yeah, I'm not going to get into any more than that. Uh, others hated it, hated everything it stood for, hated that what they saw as a social justice warrior remix of Star Wars they grew up with. What well, is? It is a social justice warrior remix because it's got all this forced diversity in it. I don't have a problem with diversity at all. I mean, there's been diversity in Star Wars films before. Um, but they're force-feeding it down everyone's throats. And... That's not cool. That's not cool. Then they're saying, those fans are minority, but loud one. Found their them and the very thing they used to love. Well, you know what? Uh, it's not a minority of fans. If Solo tanked, then a minority of fans uh, would not have been able to tank Star Wars, the Solo, like it tanked. There's a majority of fans who were upset and they were upset and decided to say uh, you know what not gonna go see Solo I didn't um, I felt burned 
from The Last Jedi. I went and I went to IMAX. I went to 3D. Um, me, my wife, my daughter, all three of us went. Spent close to 60 bucks. Um, came out of there wondering what the heck just happened. It's like, at first I was kind of like, okay, I kind of like that. And then when I started analyzing, because I, I like to, I was curious, why are people, why were people hating on the movie? And then when I started seeing what people were talking about, I started to understand why they were not liking it. And so when I started to analyze the movie, um, as far as story-wise, and I started to understand, yeah, yeah, this movie does have a lot of problems. And I felt burned. I felt burned as a result. And, I mean, so so much so that I don't want to see another Star Wars movie um, and paying full price like that. I do want to see Solo. Um, and I'm waiting for the dollar theater for that. I'm going to pay what I think it's worth. Uh, a buck or two. Um, I don't want to give Lucasfilm any more money than that. Because I think they need to turn things around. Um, start listening to feedback. Uh, and construct constructive criticism. Um, and just start doing better. I get it that it's art and the writers and the directors want to be able to artistically express themselves. I get that. But guess what? This is a business. And in this business, you've got to make money. You've got to make a profit. And if you don't do that, uh, well, whoever hired you is going to hire someone else that can. Uh, this filmmaking is expensive even independent filmmaking expensive um i was going through student filmmaking when i was younger Pfft, that stuff is not cheap i'll tell you what it's not cheap at all and it, it there's a lot of work that goes in uh into it um and if you're trying if you're if you're if you're spending a lot of time on something you want people to be able to watch your stuff but if people don't want to watch your stuff well that's kind of disheartening so wouldn't it make sense to listen to what people are saying um, and find a nice balance of your art and people's suggestions I would think so I mean you want to get people on board with what you're doing so you know, find that happy balance, that happy medium. Uh, and also, it just kind of goes back. And, I, and it's not so much the customer is right type of thing. But I, the point that people are trying to make is that, you know, hey, if I go to a restaurant um, and it's dirty and it's filthy and, you know, you go and sit down and... Um, we can use Denny's as an example. <laughs> Not hating on Denny's. Denny's just seems to be that place that you... No one really wants to go to Denny's. It's kind of like that's where you go when there's no, you know, when there's no other place to go. Well, where do you guys want to go? I don't know. How about Denny's? All right. Because <laughs> they just, they're just open. Um, it always seems like they have the worst servers. No offense if you work at Denny's. Um... Maybe I just haven't had the best of luck. Sometimes I've had some good luck, but um, it's not like their food is anything all that fantastic. But anyway, it, it's like going to a restaurant and it's filthy and it stinks and your food comes out. And this used to be a great restaurant. I used to love enjoying going to this restaurant. And now all of a sudden it's kind of bad. You know, um, the next time you have an outing, are you going to go there? Probably not. You may say, hey, you know what? You guys have gone downhill. This is suck. This this is crap. You guys need to get your act together. And, and if I'm not going to come back until you do. Well, that's how it was with Solo. I'm sure there were many people that wanted to see it. But they said, you know what? 
I don't like the direction uh, Star Wars is going, so I'm not coming back to the Lucasfilm restaurant until you guys start making changes and make things better. Same concept. Same concept. Uh, so those who chose this particular vein of the dark side, emboldened by the faceless intoxication of the internet, went hard on uh, Tran, Rose Tico. Racist, invective, misogyny, rape, death threats. Okay, that's all not cool. That is all uncool. So for those people who were hating on her, shame on you. All right. She's just, she's doing a job. She's a part of Star Wars, something big. I mean, heck, if, if I was hired to work on Star Wars, I think that would be exciting. So... But, you know, you got a job to do. And she was doing her job. She may have not liked her character, but she she did her she did her job. She did the best that she could. So those of you that are hating on her, shame on you. There's a difference between hating the character and hating the actress. And when you cross that line, you're the problem. So, yeah. So for those of you, if you've done that. Yeah, you are toxic. Um, and maybe you should go away. Um, but th all of the fans talk? No. There are some fans who love Star Wars and want everything, you know, want a lot of Star Wars. Like, there's Marvel movies. But if they're continually going to get backlashed against by Disney and the writers and the producers, well, you know, it's kind of like going into a store and everyone you know the employees are rude to you are you gonna go that back there no, no. Man, screw you i ain't coming back here your service sucks i'll go somewhere else and that's what people are trying to say um then there was this whole backlash they're talking about the backlash of the 2016 reboot of ghostbusters again um, an, a an actress specifically getting backlash that was not called for. Um, I did not see the reboot of Ghostbusters. I have no interest in seeing it. Um, but anyway, uh, this goes into here. what exactly the Star Wars want. And uh, fans were wanting more, which is true. But we want something new we don't want something that has been done before um, episode 7 although it, it set things up it was just a rehash of uh, the original Star Wars episode 4 um, I get it I understand what it was, was kind of like jump starting everything again so I get that but it, they could have done something else, I think. Um, and then Last Jedi was like it threw everything out uh, that was being set up and kind of went its own direction. But, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, it kind of goes in this article goes in a little bit in the force awakens this whole thing about um social justice warriors anti-social justice warriors and boycott episode seven. Oh, i don't even remember that stuff i never really paid attention to it um, um as far as solo I don't have a problem with Ron Howard. Um, in fact, I, I was expecting that Solo might actually be a great film because Ron Howard was working on it. Although I'd be interested to see what it would have looked like with the original directors. But um, then just more stuff started coming out about the movie and I just I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to watch this thing full price. No way. And then the backlash. I mean, this whole thing with the writers coming out and saying, oh, well, Lando's pan pansexual. Really? I mean, 
what was the whole purpose of coming out with that before the movie right before the movie came out was that even necessary no it wasn't it wasn't necessary at all you could have just you could have just left that alone let the movie be what it is and maybe people will come up with that conclusion on their own you know that's that's the fun thing about this uh, movies people don't like to be force-fed stuff they don't want to be told what to think or how to think people just want to go to the movies to enjoy themselves and then discuss the movies with their friends and peop the people that they work with you know the, and say hey what did you think about this oh yeah this that, that. well you know uh, Lando it's got me kind of wondering if he you know might be interested in more than just women it's like oh well you know I kind of thought that too but you know it's people come up with their own conclusions and their theories but no one's actually force feeding that onto them saying well this is how it is and this is how you need to think um, people don't like that and and when the Kasdans went came out and said that Lando was pansexual I just yeah that didn't go over very well um, I didn't appreciate it at all uh, so what is Star Wars fandom against turns out the answer itself or rather the realization that Star Wars is and always has been for children and they aren't children anymore. Yeah, but there are kids that are saying they didn't even like these new movies either. So what do you say about about them? Um, no diehard fan wants to imagine himself as old as Luke Skywalker hiding on an island. Where the hell does this come from? People, they're not... <laughs> it sounds so stupid. The fans are not hating on The Last Jedi because they're afraid of being old like Luke Skywalker hiding out in an island. Come on. That's stupid. That's such a stupid sentence. Uh, but if you saw the original Star Wars in the theater, I did. Uh, I was... How, how old was I? Six. I was six years old when... It, yeah, I was six years old when it came out. And I remember it was at a big screen. That thing was... Huge. I was small, and the screen was huge. Oh man, I won't forget that. Especially when the Star Destroyer came up, when it opened up, and I was like, "Whoa, this is cool." <laughs> so, but <sighs> that's who you are. You're afraid of being old, like Luke Skywalker. No, I'm not. That's that is so dumb. That is such a dumb paragraph right there. Um, they are forgetting the very things that spoke to him about Star Wars in the first place. Anyway, um, as a response to this, Ben Shapiro um, comes back and says that it's Kathleen Kennedy, the head of Lucasfilm, at this current time. She may not be uh, head. Uh, further down the road um, he comes back and has his whole thing about uh, this whole toxic fandom thing and I, I rather like Ben Shapiro he's a very interesting young fellow very well spoken I think um, curious to see where, where he goes Uh, so he's a conservative that doesn't make him a bad person <laughs> just like liberals I don't think all liberals are bad people um, he came to the defense of angry Star Wars fans this week after they were labeled toxic by the Hollywood Reporter and that's what we were reading before uh, and other publications throughout the entertainment industry so this is kind of going on about the same type of thing. See, like, no diehard fan wants to match himself as old as Luke Skywalker, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, Ben Shapiro came out and said that K 
Kathleen Kennedy has far more to blame for the franchise's woes than the faceless Reddit trolls. And I would agree with that. The fact that she came out and, and is wearing this t-shirt saying the Force is female, not a very wise, uh, wise thing to do. That, that, that's like, I don't know, showing favoritism or something. So that was, that was dumb. Uh, anyway, well, there wasn't much, much here. Calling your audience a bunch of deplorables didn't work well for Hillary Clinton. It's not going to work well for Disney either. Uh, but that didn't stop Bernadine from laying all the blame for Star Wars failures, not at the feet of the studio head of Kathleen Kennedy, but at the, at the feet of toxic fandom. Well, you know, the fandom is, is they are responding because they don't like what they see. So who's, who's going to take accountability for Star Wars? Well, the fans are either going to make their fan movies and forget about what Disney's doing or Disney is going to listen to what fans are trying to say, listen uh, to constructive criticism because just because you are against something doesn't make you a bad person or make you wrong it just means you have a different opinion and hey that opinion might be worth looking into but lately Disney is like, well, if you don't like our movie and like what we do, then you must be a bad person. You must be toxic. And no, that's not the case. Get your head out of your butt. <laughs> anyway, I think I've rambled on enough about about this because this can go on forever. But um, what do you think about this whole toxic, to toxic, toxic, toxic? fandom thing you think it's stupid you think it's ridiculous um i do think there are some fans out there that really are toxic and causing problems but not all of them are um i am one of the fans that i really like star wars and i and i want it to be good um but i'm not happy with what it's been going on but i certainly have not been going out and trying to badmouth uh actors and actresses and stuff that's just not cool at all so i'm i'm uh you know i'm speaking with my dollar as far as what i want to uh spend and not spend as and i offer my constructive criticism here as far as what i think and that's pretty much as far as i'm going to take it but anyway let me know what you think about this whole toxic fandom thing um, ways that you think that Star Wars could be improved um, if Star Wars is perfect the way it is right now hey feel free to leave comments on that too on why you think it's perfect what is it about Star Wars that is so great right now um, let's, let's get your opinions let's hear about them uh, but until then I appreciate you checking out the video and I'll be with you next time on another Rambler <laughs>